if you have a vector like this and you do the dot product between these two vectors, uh, what it's going to give you is the kind of the value right here, so this distance. Um, so let's say we move this arrow. So instead of it pointing this direction, let's have it be like a really low angle. Then the value is going to be even lower. So what's going to happen is that you have all of these different vectors. And the values you get as you go around this circle um, is that it's going to be, if they point in the same direction, the output of the dot product is 1. If they point, if they're completely uh, perpendicular, the output is 0. Uh, if they're completely opposite, the output is negative 1. Um, and it goes the same thing in the other direction, 0 here, and so forth. And then you get all the values in between. Um, so it's not a perfectly angular one. Uh, so this one, for instance, is not going to be 0.5. Uh, this one's going to be a bit higher, like 0 0.707 something something. Um, so and so forth. Uh, but you're still going to get the gradient. You're going to have you know 0 0.9 something here. You're going to have something lower here, like 0 0.4 and so forth. Um, so what you get is a value that goes from 1. And then as you angle over here, um, it gets lower and lower and lower. So this is super useful to have a value for how similar two normalized vectors are. That's kind of a very high level view of the dot product. Um, if they're extremely dissimilar, as, as in pointing in the complete opposite direction, you get negative 1. If they're completely the same direction, you get 1. If they're completely uh, perpendicular, you get 0. Um, so that's kind of a nice way to, to interpret the dot product and why it's useful.